start at 8.30. But now on one, Scotty invites trouble to Shortland Street. Why must you twist everything? No matter what I do, no matter what I say. It's my wedding day. Could you please stop fighting? I'm not a liar. We can work that out when we get back to India. I am not going back to India. I'm staying here with Shanti. Right? What nonsense! I'm leaving you, Naveen. I should have done it months ago. The bed in your guest room is lumpy. If you feel more comfortable at Uncle Vijay's, then please, by all means. I would rather sleep on a bed of nails than under the same roof as your father. So, what are you saying? Do you want a divorce? Yes. You can't be serious. I've thought of nothing else all night. So much that it has given me a headache. I'm going to lie down on your lumpy mattress. I can't believe that Babu would have an affair. He has an eye for the ladies. He likes to flirt, but he's a man of honour and he loves my mother. Whatever happens, they're grown-ups. They can deal with their own problems. We've got packing to do. Mm, Scotty, lovely husband. I can't go away. I can't leave Bar on her own. It's our honeymoon. But you saw how upset she is. Well, can't your sisters take care of her? Do you really want the pally over here while we're out of town? No. Well, Bar won't go back to Uncle's and... I can't leave her here alone with Kip. It wouldn't be fair on either of them. But we've only got a couple of days. I've booked a spa hotel. Well, we can go on our honeymoon later when things are back to normal. When your parents are back together, you mean? Right. Go and talk to your father. Get his side of the story. Let's see if we can patch things up quickly. I can't ask him about his love life. It's, it's too personal. But Shanti, I want to go on my honeymoon. If you don't talk to him, I will. Craig, there's two empty three bedders on the ward, but no nurses to cover them. Okay, call some bureau nurses. We're already out of budget. Well, what about the PCC? Can't they take category four and five patients? No, everyone here needs hospital admission or ED monitoring. Some have been waiting overnight, and gurneys in the corridors. Mr. Gemmell, flu symptoms and mild respiratory distress. I parked him outside, but he needs proper monitoring. Oh, don't they all? When can I get them shifted? Yeah, we're working on it. I'll tell them that. I'm sure it'll make them feel better. Look, we need those ward heads. My, go and see Callum, get emergency funding for bureau nurses. Tell him what Chris used to do in first season. Oh, he'll love that. He might take it coming from mine. Wish me luck. Right, time to rock and roll. Hey, uh, Andrew Silverman, aren't they? Ah, oh, you know your shoes. <laughs> They're gorgeous with a capital G. And expensive with a capital E. I never compromise on style. Neither do I. I think shoes and bags say a lot about a person. They certainly do. <laughs> Well, my shoes say that I'm here to work and not to be looked at. Well, people look anywhere. You have to decide what you want them to see. What people? Well, everyone. Staff, patients, the general public. Men? Men are only half the population, Tanya. So I guess uh, aching legs, back problems, painful feet are all worth it as long as some guy has his tongue hanging out. Excuse me? Enjoy your eight hours of tea tonight. I hope it's worth it. <sighs> what is her problem? Your yeah, she's off men in a big way. I bet they're off her too. Enjoy being a real woman. I hope it's worth it. She's one twisted sister. Yeah, uh, mine. Tanya's the youngest, I'm in the middle, and Maya's the oldest. And our mum is Yvonne on triage. Oh, my. I'm so sorry. I had no idea. Nah, don't worry, Tanya's a big pain these days. This anti-man kick is deathly boring. So, anyway, where did you get your shoes? We'll move you as soon as a bed becomes free, but that's the best I can say. I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Gemmell, you need to stay lying here. He's not right. He can't breathe. Good spotting, thanks. That sounds like asthma to me. It says here you've got an inhaler. What sort? It's not helping. Uh, can I get portable oxygen and a mask? Quick as you can. Uh, this is Mr. Fari. He's suffering from flu symptoms, but he's also asthmatic. His inhaler's not helping. Oxygen set? Uh, I've, I've just found him like this. I haven't had a chance to assess him. <coughs> okay, I want to give you a nebulizer, so I'll be a long 40 of prednisone. You're going to be all right. Um, he's not the only one who's getting worse. If we don't get these people into proper beds, someone's going to crash without us even knowing. Yeah, what am I supposed to do? Betty and Reese are both full. I can't just wave a magic wand. That's great. Thank you. 
Okay, well, you stay with him, I'll get the meds. And three more nurses would be a good place. She's been behaving extremely badly. The whole family is horrified. Well, have you told them why she's so upset? What has your mother been saying to you? This is so difficult. Please forgive me. Are you having an affair with Gayatri? I'm sorry, but she thinks... I would never bring shame or dishonor upon the family. You know I wouldn't. That's what I told Scotty, but when she asked you, you didn't deny... Why should I have to? We've been married for over 30 years. If she doesn't know me by now... Well, she must have got the idea from somewhere. Have you, I don't know, been working longer hours? Of course. Since that problem with the Nisha's family, I've had to pull in new clients. There have been business dinners. She's been superb, Gayatri. I can imagine. She's very charming. Well, she's been valuable. Of course, I have to drop her home. A couple of weeks ago, she dropped her lipstick in my car. I picked it up, and apparently your mother found it. Well, does she come to me and ask me about it? No. She simply packs up and flies off to New Zealand. Well, you can see how she got the wrong impression. If you just talk to her... I'm not going to go begging to her. She's the one who's been cold and distant, and she's been making our family life miserable. Frankly, I deserve better. I know she still loves you, but... Well, she says our marriage is over. Because she's hurt and jealous. That's enough. I'm not going to say anything more of this. But... I'm going to go to Vijay's. I'll be there for two days. Then I'm returning to India. With or without your mother. I didn't mean to upset your wedding or your honeymoon. These things happen. Did Shanti explain why I was... We tell each other everything. If only my husband treated me with such respect. Instead, he confides in Gayatri. I can't tell you what it's been like having the shadow of another woman looming over my marriage. It can't have been easy. I'm sorry. I'm embarrassing you. No, no, you should talk. I know I needed to when Dinesh was around. He was your rival, but at least he was out in the open. Naveen has admitted nothing. He simply carries on with this beautiful young woman without a care for how much it hurts me. How can I go back to that? I don't know. But what are my choices? A lonely life as a betrayed wife? Or an even lonelier one as a divorcee? You won't be lonely. You have Dipali and Grishma, and you can visit us any time you like. There'll always be a place for you here. Do you really mean that? Of course. Oh, James, I have been blessed. I couldn't ask for a better son-in-law. One report typed and proofed. I'll pop it anywhere. What are you doing? That was Dr. Freeman's CV. Oh. What, what, is there something suspect about it? No. I'm just trying to work out whether she'd make a good friend. By doing a background check on her. Is that what you did with me? Maybe. Oh, well, I, I suppose that may be great. <laughs> okay, what do we know about her? She's done lots of volunteer work. That's good, a big heart, we like that. She also likes to make money. She has worked at several private cosmetic clinics. Well, everybody needs a friend who knows some Botox. <laughs> oh, oh no. What? She loves horse riding. You're allergic. Ah, oh, that's just one thing. We've got plenty of things in common. Like what? Well, we both like the finer things in life, like ballet and opera and designer shoes. Um, even so, you can't just decide that you're going to be best friends with someone. Only Paris Hilton can do that. Well, me and Paris Hilton, because Brooke is going to be my new best friend. Oh. Sorry, second best. Watch and learn, number one. Any news from mine? She spoke to Callum, he said no to the phones. What? We're wall to wall down here. Well, there are six empty beds upstairs. Believe me, I know. Right, well, uh, Mr Page has been admitted by the medical registrar. If we can't move him up to the ward, he'll have to go out in the corridor. We need that cubicle. The man's in heart failure. Alice can't cope with that. She's already overstretched. Well, let's stick him up in Callum's office, see if he gets a picture there. Uh, Mr Page in cubicle three. Take him to a medical ward, please. Sure. You can't do that, it's breaking protocol. Needs much. Well, not when I did it. As I recall, you blew my head off. On that occasion, there was a better answer. This time, there isn't. I love flu season. Why don't more people get immunised? <coughs> Dr Freeman, how are you settling in? Oh, good. I'm busy. 
Yeah, I bet. Just uh, remember to take proper breaks, pace yourself. You two, Yvonne. Um, I've managed to learn that lesson. Well, I might see you both in the cafe. then. <laughs> Yes, he's single. Am I that obvious? But his wife died recently, so you shouldn't get your hopes up. No, oh, that's awful. Tragic. But he's coping. Like he always does. Yeah, you sound rather fond yourself. Chris cares for this hospital and the people who work in it. What's not to be fond of? Mm. So, what else can you tell me about him? Haven't you got runny noses to see to? Yes. <laughs> Libby is the one you should talk to. <laughs> she was Chris's PA when he was the CEO. What she doesn't know isn't worth knowing. Thanks. <laughs> Mr. Nagaraj. Hey, are you okay? Yeah, just a bit of a headache. Took a couple of paracetamol. You look tired. So do you. This place is insane. Are you sure you don't? Need a hand? Like I said, three more nurses would be good. What the? Oh, onto it. Thanks. Here you are, Mrs. Day. <coughs> Are these your idea? Yeah, I sent Gerald to the party shop at the mall. Now, whenever I'm needed, somebody toots. Nobody gets into distress without me. Either. It's pure genius. Hmm. Callum was going to hate it. I thought it might sympathise. After all, he loves to blow his own horn. <laughs> You've been gone a long time. What did your father say? I went round to Uncle's and everyone's very upset. Papa wants you to go over there and sort this out. If he cared at all, he would come to me. But no, he would rather fly back to that snake of a woman. There's nothing going on between him and Gayatri. You see, James? He has turned her against me. And the other girls, too. I have no one. That's not true. Shanti's not taking sides, are you? I believe Bapu. <sighs> you accused him falsely. His, his pride was hurt. That's why he didn't deny it. And then you walked out on his wedding speech, embarrassed him. Is there any wonder that he wants you to apologize? He is lying. He's in love with Gayatri. She's helping him keep the business on track, entertaining new clients, that's all. If you actually talk to him when he came home at night, you might know that. He doesn't talk to me either. He doesn't want me in the business. He thinks I'm not smart enough. Just go and see him. No. If he wants me back, he can make the effort. It isn't much to ask, Shanti, after 30 years of marriage. He's done nothing wrong. Your mother feels undervalued. That doesn't happen overnight. Are you saying that he's neglected her? That's the way she feels. He's been working day Stop and night. Stop it. Both of you. You mustn't argue because of us. I feel terrible. Will you please go around there? No. Oh. But I will take you out for dinner. Since you're not on your honeymoon, it is the least I can do. Let's get ready. of the locum rosters for Callum. Oh, you didn't have to do that. You can lodge it electronically. Ah, uh, confession. I just needed a change of scene. I'm so over runny noses and hacking coughs. <laughs> but I suppose you're too busy to chat? No, I could do with a break. Great. I meant to ask, who's the lucky man? Oh, that's Karen. He owns the IV across the road. Very nice. And when's the big day? Oh, we haven't set one yet. We're not even officially engaged yet. Ah, cold feet? Cautious feet. What about you? Free as a bird. So, uh, what's Callum like to work for? We butted heads at first. His style is so different to Chris's, but uh, we get along now. I hadn't realised Chris used to be the CEO. Yeah, he was fantastic. Ah, we were a great team. Was he still in the chair when his wife died? You heard about that? Your mum told me. <laughs> yeah, it was a very, very tough time for him. Yeah, I'm sure. And for you, as his support person? There was no way I wasn't going to be there for him to lean on. We're still close. Well, he'll need his friends. It's lucky we have a lot in common. We both like opera and ballet, classical music. Oh, I love all those things too. Really? Yeah, well, I suppose if you go to the opera, though, you go with Chris. Ah, not always. <laughs> he is a patron of the opera company, though, and when he gets freebies, he passes them on to me. Well, maybe we could go sometime. I'd really like that. So, what else can Chris get us free tickets for? Hi, Kit. Uh, hi. We want to see our mother. Um, she's out. So are Shanti and Scotty. Oh, I told you we should have called first. Oh, I'll tell them you dropped by. Oh, I don't mind waiting. I do. Then go back to Vijay and Rani's. And let Bar come home and find you here with this man. Our parents have enough problems. 
How was your day? Uh, rough. It's flu season. We're swamped. So you didn't have any real emergencies? The flu can get very serious very fast. People can develop respiratory problems, pneumonia. <laughs> I never knew the flu could be so interesting. Yes, I'm sure Dipali would like to hear all about the mucus and the phlegm. Right. Anyone for a cup of tea? Milk. No sugar. Because you're sweet enough already. Dipali? The same. I'll help. No, no, it's okay. No, please, I want to. Look, that could be some time yet. Why don't I just get Shobna to give you a bell when she gets in? Oh, no. I'm happy to wait no matter how long. <sighs> I'm sorry about this, Mr. Page. Hopefully there'll be a room free shortly. Thank you. <coughs> oh, I've called the Bureau and there's still nurses available. I told you, the emergency fund is for emergencies. Edie is being slammed. We have to take the pressure off somehow. Yeah, look, this happens every winter. In the next 24 hours, the overcrowding will ease, and then we're back to normal. Uh, that's not much comfort to the patients. They're ill and miserable. Yeah, and well, I don't like it any more than you do, but I have to think ahead. If I allocate the emergency fund to the flu and we're hit with another norovirus outbreak, then what? Why isn't that man in a room? Well, there are no beds available. Well, he shouldn't be out there. Who sent him up? I think it was a mistake there. So Maya, who sent him up? Craig, but they Thought as much. <laughs> hey, look who it is, home at last. Have your father who sent you here to twist my arm? You're wasting your time. That's my cue to leave. Um, good night, all. Good night. I'll put the jug on. Did Babu ask you to come? He didn't have to. It was difficult for him, but he told us what you've been saying about Gayatri. It's ridiculous. He's very attentive to her, at my expense. And we've talked about this. You've been just as cool with him. Doesn't that prove our marriage is over? No, it does to me. I'm sick and tired of being the slave of the house. Your father won't let me be anything more. She has a point. Her life is very dull. I am very dull. I have no career, no independence. I've never traveled. It is no wonder your father finds other women more interesting. I'm sure he has no idea that that's how you feel. But hiding away is not the answer. You need to tell him. Be strong, Ba. Demand your freedom. Do it for all of us. I need to use the bathroom. Uh, you went five minutes ago. Stay right where you are. This concerns us all. And you too, Scotty. Tell Ba that she can change things without having to end her marriage. It's none of my business. Oh, maybe you can do some travelling together. Your boss deserves a break. And Gayatri can certainly run the business. No. It is time for me to start my new life in India. Good luck. I'm not going back. I'm taking up James's invitation. What invitation? He told me today that I will always have a place here with you. He has changed everything. Scotty? Since we appear to be on speaking terms again, do you mind telling me where I stand? Engaged or not? At the moment, not. Then why are you still wearing my ring? Because obviously I don't want people thinking we've broken up. <laughs> Look, I still love you. Worst luck. I just need you to prove that you're worth it. I'll bring these over. Look, this is Kieran. Ah, the fiancé. Hi. Hi, pleasure to meet you. Menus too, please. All right, coming up. He's a dish. Well done, you. <laughs> and how about you? Why are you single? Gorgeous, accomplished? <sighs> Not really. Uh, hello, a medical career, the arts, charity work, even horse riding. Gosh, you've memorised my CV. I only looked at it once when Callum was hiring. I was very impressed. Another confession? It's not all true. Oh? <laughs> I made up the horse riding part. I needed something on the hobby front and I didn't think shopping would cut it. I hate horses, they make me sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> well, no team building pony tricks for us then. <laughs> so, now that you know my deep dark secret, can I ask you a favour? Sure. Chris Warner. I know it's a bit sudden, but what I've seen I really like. Do you think you could set us up? What is all this? <laughs> Alice's clever idea. If a patient needs her, they just... <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Craig. I suppose Craig authorised this, did he? Of course he did. 
What's wrong? I heard tooting. And they got excited when they saw the tea trolley. Right, listen up, everyone. You toot <coughs> if you need a doctor or a nurse. Those hooters for emergencies only. Nothing else. Got it? Good. Now, who wants tea? <laughs> Yes, OK, thank you. That'll have to do. Dr Valentine, I knew I should have disciplined you when I had the chance. You might have learned something about sticking to protocol. This is about Mr Page. Yes, the patient you dumped on the medical ward when you knew he didn't have a bed. When he was beds, he was too cheap to pay for more staff. <sighs> Don't be so simplistic. It is a routine flu outbreak. The crisis will pass in 24 hours. We can't wait, Callum. We need beds now. Have you seen what it's like in the corridor? Yes, I've seen and heard. Please collect up all the hooters. And you might want to take charge of your girlfriend before she turns this place into a circus. <clears throat> Alice is not my girlfriend. She's a senior nurse who puts patient welfare first and can think laterally in a crisis, unlike you. And she is working her butt off out there, which she is paid to do. And what was the plan anyway? To buy hooters for all the patients who go through there? Look, they can't be reused in a flu zone, so get rid of them. You know your problem. <coughs> you think being CEO is all about waving a big stick around. Well, it's not. You'll never cut it without the goodwill of your staff. And you'd know about that, would you? Work with Chris long enough. I've seen it done right. Right. Well, I'm in charge now. And are you going to accept that and do what you're told? Or do I have a problem on my hands? But if Chris and Tony were separated before she died, it's not like he's grieving for his lost love. He still cared about her, though. I'll be sensitive. I'd just like to have a drink with him. The thing is, if you move too soon, you could put him off for good. I suppose. And he's got his son Harry to worry about. It's not easy being a solo father. Evening, ladies. Hi, Chris. What are you doing here? No, oh, I'm picking up a pizza for Harry and the sitter. Oh, don't let us keep you. Nothing worse than cold pizza. Oh, I quite like it. No, it won't be ready yet. I allowed time for a drink. No, oh, you should join us. Thank you. Uh, whiskey, please, and another round for the ladies. So, Libby tells me you're a fan of the ballet. Did you know Romeo and Juliet's opening this week? I'm planning on seeing it. Mm, me too, if I can get in. Tickets are gold. Well, if you want, I can easily get two. We could go together. Romeo and Juliet die in the end. Oh. Oh, sorry. I've ruined it for you. That's okay, I knew the ending. So, what do you think, Libby? Should I take Dr. Warner up on his offer? Mm, I'm not sure. Libby? Oh, sorry, I don't, I don't see why not. Then it's a yes. Excellent. Last year's leaders take on this year's five in the final army challenge of Operation Transformation tonight at 8 o'clock here on RTE1.